Okay. Thank you all for joining us. This is going to be an informal uh, conversation about this new end user security training offering that Simplex IT is bringing. Obviously, we're doing this with a third party partner, uh, and uh, but we've well, we'll get into the details and all that good fun stuff. Um, first of all, as always, we have to do the obligatory who we are, all that, Simplex IT. We are the IT provider for IT department for small, medium organizations, uh, and we work with existing IT departments as well. Um, we also do the database side, the project management side. We're going to go through this stuff quickly. Here's upcoming events. What should we be clicking? Uh, the training guide here. Uh, what's going on? We also have uh, three events coming up in November and three including our sixth annual Geek Raffle. So here are the events we've got coming up. As always, all of these are free, open to the public, all that good fun stuff. Uh, let's get right into it. Security. For those of you who have kept track of all of our events and our promotions and basically the way that we do services, uh, about two and a half, almost three years now ago, things really changed dramatically in the, in the security world because we were really caught up into the, uh, the way it used to be was that security really didn't, or, or security hacks really didn't pay all that much uh, unless you were really the big tier and you got into the big companies and all that kind of thing. So the whole idea of who the hackers were, were these people, and here's the stereotype here, uh, the people who just did it for fun and all that. But this is an actual example of a person, uh, Paul Rublesevsky. Thank you very much for uh, pronouncing that one horribly. Uh, this is a businessman. This is a guy who is making a ton of money, and that's the biggest issue. The the fact that it now pays a lot to be a bad guy in the IT security world. Uh, and you can see other, we did a, a luncheon R, and it's up on YouTube on security. I'll go through the metrics, all the numbers, all of that kind of thing, but the bottom line is that uh, security is a big deal regardless of the size of company and organization, and it's a lot more complicated than it used to be because the bad guys now have financial incentives to be bad guys. You put that together with the fact that organizations are now a lot more complicated, even smaller organizations. You now have multiple locations. You have remote offices. You have uh, users who are not only working on-prem uh, local networks, but they're also working remotely. We're also letting vendors, we're letting customers, letting all sorts of people having access to all sorts of data. It's a lot more complicated. So. When we talk about security strategy, we talk about what we call the four pillars. And the four pillars are essentially the areas that companies, organizations, somebody has to pay attention to. Because without all four of these in place, it's kind of like putting locks on three of your four doors. Yay, 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 eh, not so much. So, and the problem is, is that up until, up until now, we've really been talking about having products, having services that dealt with these other three. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on these. And by the way, if you signed up for the event, uh, we'll be sending you an email that will have these slides, so you'll have these. So the first one, which was the traditional one, was the products. Those are your firewalls, uh, antivirus, all of that good fun stuff. And again, if you think of, uh, uh, antivirus endpoint protection is all you need, sadly, sadly, sorely mistaken. Only about 30% of hits that a companies, uh, the companies uh, uh, work with are actual viruses. The rest of them are all over the place uh, for others. The same thing for process. How do you deal with risk assessment? When you talk about changing new technology or changing uh, business processes, how do you evaluate that in terms of making sure that the risk is managed? It can never be eliminated. There's no such thing, but managed. And then policy. Again, BYOD. By, by allowing people to access corporate information through their own personal devices, you're increasing the productivity, you're increasing the flexibility, but you're also increasing the, the potential vulnerability unless you've got control of their devices, which opens up a whole other can of worms. So again, this is not the topic for today, but just wanted to know, just wanted to, to point these out. This is the biggie. People. If we've got people who don't pay attention to where they should, you know, if you've got all the great locks on the door but nobody bothers to lock the door, what good is it? If we've got people who will click on anything, anytime, anywhere, put their passwords under the keyboard or the password is 
password or password one because that'll throw them. Uh, all of that good fun stuff. Then a lot of the you know the other stuff really doesn't matter that much, or doesn't matter as much. So we need to do this. And the problem is is that outside, it's always been a well. We'll either have we'll do a luncheon hour where we basically say hey you shouldn't click on this, or we're going to just tell people, or we'll send over a YouTube video. There's never been a really good way for us to say without a fair amount of expense uh, for us to say hey. Here's we want to have a concise, consistent message to our employees that you shouldn't do this or you should do this and why. And that's what we're f filling in the gap. The last thing I want to go before we really talk about the product itself is really a self-assessment. And this is this is through CompTIA, which is a uh, non-vendor specific IT organization, talks about standards and all that. And really what they talk about is organizations from a uh, self-assessment, are you in the danger zone, halfway home, and lockdown? And it's just kind of an overview of how serious does your organization take security. Now, there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, obviously you want an organization to be locked down when you're talking about the need to be secure. Uh, but by the same token, there's some cases where you can't be as locked down as you want to be. And these are just some examples, and really it's the first. Uh, if you're in the danger zone, if you've got no policies, employees are allowed to do whatever they want to, employees can do whatever they want to in terms of phishing attacks, and you notice employees, employees, employees. Hmm, interesting. Halfway home, yeah, you've got it. policies, but employees don't, aren't aware of it. Uh, so it's different. Some employees know they're supposed to, some employees don't, and there's a little bit of stuff in place. And then finally, lockdown. There is employees. And you'll notice, again, employees, employees, employees. By the way, we use these self-assessment regardless of whether we're talking about antivirus, whether we're talking about endpoint protection, whether we're talking about UTMs, firewalls, any of those things. These are still legitimate, but you'll notice that employees figure in a big part here. Then the last couple of things I'm going to show you on Verizon uh, breach invest investigations because a lot of companies, and this used to be true, but a lot of companies would talk about we're too small, we're not big enough, with the idea being that the bad guys had to focus in order to uh, invade, in order to attack an organization. Why focus? Why expend money on going after a particular company when you're so small? Well, they've automated They've joined the 21st century. They now have ways to automatically try to infiltrate, take advantage of an organization, get a little bit of money. Uh, again, I get back to the whole, it's a business model, and unfortunately, the bad guys have a good one. So you can take a look, and number of employees, 11 to 100, is 66% of the successful data breaches. Why? Because 66%, they're not large enough to usually have a significant uh, actual security uh, a solution or program in place and in a lot of cases it's because the ownership hasn't been around the IT world long enough or the management they look at that as strictly an expense and finally this is uh, IBM security services 95 percent of breaches caused by human error now this is a somewhat misleading uh, number because human error can also be that the humans didn't update the firewall properly that the humans didn't uh, configure the tools properly. We've got the right tools, we're just not using them in the right way. So, but the bottom line is, again, people, employees, that sort of thing. So here's what we're trying to do. We're basically creating and, and offering a service to customers and the price on this is relatively ridiculous. Uh, but what this does is this creates a portal for your organization and in this portal you would go in and add each of your employees and in some organizations not all employees need this you have if you're a manufacturing organization you may have people on the shop floor who really don't do email let alone computer access network anything along those lines fine you don't need them to have this this uh, action but this is a online class. The employee can take this at their leisure. They get their own credentials, their own password. They then have, depending upon how fast you go through it, about an hour to an hour and a half or so to go through the whole process. It includes videos. Okay, the some say videos are actually fun. Yeah, as you can see, I cut and paste some of this stuff. Not sure that would be, but they're not dry and they're aimed at end users. They're not aimed at IT professionals. All right? And there are quizzes throughout 
so that they measure how well they do. They can see the process. They can start it. They can stop it. They can go back when they go back to the portal. The system says you want to continue where you left off, so on and so forth. Then once done, there's a 20 question quiz. And it's more true, false, multiple choice. The employee needs to get 80% better. You can take as many times as you want. And there's a certificate. So yes, there's an attaboy. The thing here, though, is that the, the organization, your organization, has a portal that you can see all of the employees. You've created a sign-in for each individual employee, and it takes two seconds to add, and I'll walk you through this in a minute. You can see how far employees have gotten. You can see whether or not the employees have taken the test, have passed the test. So what ends up happening is now you have a consistent message, a consistent training level that you've given to all of your employees. Think of it in terms of also bringing a new employee on board. You just literally you go in the portal, you create it, boom, you make it available, done. And then you make sure that they do it within the period of time. Okay? And this isn't I, mean, I hate to say it, this isn't rocket science, both from a portal standpoint as well as from the end user standpoint. So, any questions so far, just go ahead and add them to the conversation. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. Okay, cool. Because I'm making so much sense, this is the most brilliant thing you've ever seen. So, this is a sample. We're going to do a demo. So, this is a sample. As you can see, we're talking about explanations about what is phishing as an example, what's ransomware, what, what's the difference between complex passwords and just regular passwords, Wi-Fi access points, the do's and don'ts. All of that good stuff is there. And it's a simple, here's the section, you move on to the next section, you go back to the previous section, you see that some of them have audio, all of that good fun stuff. So it's fairly straightforward, it's fairly well regulated. And also, it is updated annually. Uh, and it's early for us to say this because we're just starting with this, but it will not go out of date. Okay, so now let's take a look at the demo. So the first demo I'm going to show you, the first portal, this is a portal that you would see for your organization. Now, this is the first of several Op options that we're going to make available. The rest is to coming out uh, in Q1 of next year, which will include policy and procedures, risk assessments, uh, testing. So we will actually be able to create uh, phishing emails for your customers, or excuse me, for your employees that you will answer. You know, if if employees uh, respond to it inappropriately, it'll actually say, "Oh, you." You know, you, you shouldn't have replied to this one and report back to you so that you know that your employees are doing this right or not. Okay? But this is it. So right now we've created a worldwide widgets. So the employee administrator logs on to worldwide widgets and then they go ahead and they want to add, by the way, we can also import a bulk list of employees if we want to. If we want to add a new employee, we simply say uh, Wanda Widget at www.widgets.com. Give her a password. Verify it. We've now added another user. Oh, unless we did, oh, passwords don't match. We almost added another user. Okay, so now all we have to do is to email to Wanda. Here's the portal, here's the web, and we'll help you, but you can have a standard email that you send to all new users about this. And we can help you put that together so that all you do is, here's the email, here's your link, here's your uh, account, all that good fun stuff. And that's it. That's how you see. And then, as you can see, oh, by the way, this is a video that you will get when you first go to the portal. 
I'm not going to go through the whole video, but this gives you an overview of how to work with the administration of the of that site. Um, I don't think you could hear the audio because uh, a a video comes through but a video with audio doesn't come through on the Skype for business but this includes the audio this gives you a overview of the site all that this is from an administrative standpoint so you get that and then actually let's show it from an employee standpoint this is what an employee would see. So this is Wally Widget logging in to the site. Wally goes into the training. Click here to access the class. And right now the security training is the only one we're putting through this. And here we are. So here's what the actual end user sees as far as as they start taking the class. And as they go through sections, it gives them the introduction. And I've turned the sound. There's no sound on it right now. Gives the, So it even walks them through how to use this, this tool. So all the administrator, the customer, you guys, have to do is you go in you add your employees, and again, you can bulk add them through an import. Uh, you communicate to them through emails that here's the site, here or however you want to communicate to them, that here's the training, here's the requirements, and then you track how they've done. And if you want to have requirements of when you're an employee, uh, we're giving you four months to do this, we're giving you... Uh, you know, a bonus pizza lunch for people, whatever. The bottom line is it's in your hands to control who's taken this, who hasn't, who needs to, who doesn't. And again, I stress one of the great things about this is to create this as a requirement for ramping a new employee up. Because one of the biggest challenges you have, especially if you're talking about security and employee policy and procedure requirements, is did you explain to them what their requirements are? And the answer here is, well, yeah, they took this class. And they they took the quiz. They passed the test. So we think this is, and it's still reasonable. You know, it's, it's asking for an hour. Any questions on that so far? Okay. So... This is just an overview of some of the topics that are covered. So it's not just what should you click, uh, what is personal information, the internal and external threats, types of scams, uh, the video on helping you spot the scams, passwords, Wi-Fi, why you should be careful about uh, which uh, wireless connections you, you uh, uh, connect to, all of that good fun stuff. So all of these are just some of the topics that are there. Does the employee portal remain available to the employee? Absolutely. Well, it's it's up to you. As long as you want to keep them there active as a user, yes, they can go in. Plus, if there are updates, uh, or excuse me, as there are updates, and again, it's going to be annual, so it's not going to be like every week or so, you can say, hey, revisit this site because this information has been updated. And as we add more content, uh, and it's going to be up to you whether you want to take advantage of some of the content that in that stuff will be available as well so cool thank you John it shows me someone's listening <laughs> who shouldn't get this my dad was an insurance salesman and he taught me two things the first was I really had no interest in being an insurance salesman uh, the second was that you should always tell your customers why something isn't a good fit this is not HIPAA all right. This is not going to take the place for uh, training uh, employees on HIPAA requirements. Uh, there are services that are available that can do that, but this doesn't go to that level. Okay. So if you're looking to meet HIPAA standards or HIPAA requirements, this is th this may be a start, but that's all this is. Now the pricing. This is where 
this is cheap, okay? Um, and this gets a little bit specific to Simplex IT, but if you have a gold platinum agreement with Simplex IT, that means that we maintain your standard infrastructure without additional charge, regardless of whether you're doing 365 or an on-premise on exchange box, it's free. We're just adding this to that. Why? Because we think this is going to help us control our costs because we still have, you know, we have employees of customers who do things that they shouldn't have. And we think if we offer this free, it's going to lower our costs. So we think we're crazy like a fox. Organizations that have a silver, which is both uh, monitoring, or they're purchasing their 365 through us, then we charge $1 a month, uh, $1 per mailbox per month. So $12 a year for employees and a $300 one-time implementation cost. Uh, and I want to be clear, remember, our, our organization or our agreements are 30 day out. So that if you decide after a couple of months, hey, everybody's gotten the training, we're done, we're not, yeah, fine, cancel it. You know, and uh, no problem, no harm whatsoever. Um, but it does have, it's however many mailboxes you have. It's not a question of how many employees need it. So, because we just, as you can see, the money we're talking about changing hands, it's not worth the headaches for us. So if you have 50 mailboxes, uh, it'll cost you $50 a month, even if you only have 20 people taking the training. But if you want to look at it from the standpoint of, we're just going to do the training to get everybody trained as a one-time thing, you can have it for three or four months, $200 and done. If you add plus $300 implementation. So for $500, an organization of 50 employees can have all 50 employees, if they wanted to, go through this training and have some form of proof. And if you don't have an agreement with Simplex IT, let's talk. As you can see, this is not a huge cost or a huge price uh, for our customers. However, this is one of the things that we're doing to ex extend our services to customers. So there'd be more cost to organizations that don't have a relationship with us. But it kind of tells you maybe you should have a relationship with us. And then we have the, if you're interested, here's how to contact us for more. Uh, it does not take much time at all for us to ramp this up. Uh, it basically, within a couple of calendar days, uh, we can get it uh, doing it's more of a scheduling than anything else. And we would walk you through uh, implementing it and help you with it uh, moving forward. And I hate to say it, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're excited. We think this is a perfect training. Of course not, there's no such thing. Um, but this is the first product that we've seen that the pricing, that really aren't a lot of excuses to get your employees uh, educated in a consistent way uh, in terms of security and what they should be doing or not be doing online. We, we really like the product. And like I said, in, in uh, first quarter next year, we're going to be adding some of the documented procedures, uh, some automated testing, uh, some other things as well. Uh, there may be some additional pricing, but uh, cost for that, but it's not going to be that much. So we really like this because we've been working a lot on improving our security uh, uh, foothold, and this is the first time we've really been able to add uh, on the people side. Cool. All right. Um, again, contact us if you're interested. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know how to get a hold of me, bob at simplex-it.com or info at simplex-it.com. And uh, that is, if there aren't any other questions, that is pretty much it. Thanks, everybody.